Hey everybody, welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we're taking a special request from one of my Patreon supporters. The video is called, Can De-Escalation Training Prevent Police Violence? From MTV's Decoded. Let's check it out. We've talked a lot about the problem of police violence on our show, but today we want to focus on a possible solution, de-escalation. Let me translate that for you guys. Today Franny is going to propose a stupid solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Can't wait. Studies have shown that when police officers are properly trained in de-escalation techniques, there are far fewer fatalities. What studies? Where are you getting them? There are no sources in your descriptions or anywhere. Just a link to a website for Campaign Zero. Some bullshit regressive activist site with pics of people who support Ferguson and Black Lives Matter. They sound biased as fuck. Just like Francesca and MTV. And don't just take my word for it, the US military has a big focus on de-escalation training. Don't worry, no one is taking your word on anything nowadays, Franny. First you said, studies show that when police officers are trained in de-escalation techniques, there are fewer fatalities. That sounds reasonable and believable, sure. But where are your fucking studies. I want proof. And your transition to, don't take my word for it, the US military has a big focus on de-escalation training. That doesn't prove anything. Just because the military has de-escalation training doesn't mean if we teach it to cops there will be fewer fatalities. That's just not how things work. Cops and the military are totally different things. And I don't even think the military has de-escalation training. They're trained to kill people in war, not talk to them and tell them to calm down and be nice. So to talk more about this, we've brought Banari Poulton, an army veteran with tours of Iraq and Afghanistan. Thanks for being here, Benari. Look at that little guy, sitting in his big boy chair. I bet his feet barely touched the ground. But really, now I wonder if he was even in the military. Probably, but him associating with Francesca makes me question it. Then again, when I looked him up, it said he was a writer for both Huffington Post and The Nightly Show with Larry Wilmore. Clearly, he will shill for just about anyone. Even if he was in the military, I doubt he saw any action. So what exactly is de-escalation? Oh, well, essentially, if you're in a hostile environment or in a hostile situation, you want to bring uh, calm and, and peace to the situation as quickly and efficiently as possible. Of course, we all know what de-escalation means, and it sounds like a good idea in theory, but these two assholes have no clue what's going on in the streets, what the cops have to deal with. People are crazy. Can you please tell me how to de-escalate a situation like this? Your hands behind your back. Behind your back. There you go. Separate your feet. You ever been arrested or anything? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay. I'm just headed down to go see my girlfriend. Okay. Do you have your ID on you? Uh, yes, I do. It's okay. In my, it's in my left okay. Can I search your pockets? Uh, I mean, do you have anything? Lit? What's what, what's that right there? You got some squish oh, in there. It's my phone. Okay. All right. Bro. Okay. I'm, I'm legit. Like, okay. Yeah, bro. Bro. Do you have anything illegal in your pockets? No, That's what I'm asking. No. Can I search your pockets? No, sir. Okay. I, I don't, sir. I don't, I don't have any. That cop was de-escalating pretty good until the guy started to run and put him in a headlock. The truth is, cops already do use de-escalation. It just doesn't work with most criminals. In 2014, nearly 60% of the people killed by police officers were unarmed or were involved in harmless activities. How much you guys want to bet that this fact is bullshit too? Well, this one actually has a source written on it, so let's check it out, shall we? Mappingpoliceviolence.org. We go to the front page and boom, police have killed at least 263 black people in current year. Yeah, this site isn't being sensational at all. They want you to read that and think, wow, police are really out to get black people. But I read it and think, wow, black people are committing a shitload of crimes that get some shot by cops. And I looked through this garbage faux information site and I couldn't find Franny 60% of people killed by police officers were unarmed or involved in harmless activities. Sounds like more bullshit to me. What really throws me off is that awkward or in there. They were unarmed or involved in harmless activities? So were the ones in harmless activities armed then? I feel like they're just lumping these two groups together to try and strengthen their point. Also, they say unarmed like it means the criminals were innocent and friendly. No, unarmed doesn't mean shit. There are plenty of unarmed dangerous people out there who need to get shot. Which says to me that cops are struggling to assess the threat level of civilians that they encounter. Well, that's because you're a fucking racist idiot. Stop blaming the cops and start blaming the criminals. It's the criminals' choices which got them in situations where cops needed to shoot them. It's not some racist conspiracy. The reason cops are shooting more black people is because black people commit more crime than any other race in America. And it's not even fucking close. And unlike these hacks at MTV, I do have sources for that in my description. And if you want to see it for yourself, check out Colin Flaherty's YouTube channel. He has been exposing this massive crime wave in black communities for years. Funny how me and Colin, two white guys making videos in our living rooms, we are the ones making accurate videos with proper sources. While MTV, a billion dollar company, is pushing lies with fake sources. Seems legit to me. So what if some
someone who's unarmed is like running at you, what would you do to assess the situation? Well, generally speaking, you know, we're trained to uh, assess things like, is this person armed? Are they not armed? Do they present a danger to me personally? Do they present a danger to the people around us? Do they seem to be in danger themselves? Are they in distress? Are they coming to us for help? But when they're looking for help, we don't shoot them. <laughs> no, you okay. don't want to shoot someone who's coming to you All right. for help. Damn it, Franny, you make me do this every goddamn time. Okay, guys, that was a joke in case you missed it. I feel like one time when she was in high school, a guy told Franny she was funny to try and get in her pants. Ever since then, Franny thought she was the funny one at school, and now she's a self-proclaimed comedian. Yay! But really, this joke tells you how Franny views cops. They are just a bunch of idiots shooting guns at people willy-nilly to her. No, they're fucking heroes who protect us from criminals and crazy people. And this prevalent anti-cop mindset in the black community, that's another reason black people get shot by cops so much. If black people respected cops and the law more, they wouldn't get arrested and shot more. The goal is to neutralize the threat using as minimal force as necessary. So when do you shoot them though? <laughs> well, uh, hopefully you don't get to that. Okay. Uh, you don't get to I that. I just want to make sure that I'm clear. <laughs> you shoot the criminals when they threaten your life. You know, like when they try and tackle you in the example you gave. Or when they pull out weapons. That's when cops shoot people. They're not just going up and shooting black people for no reason, you fucking moron. Don't you think that would be all over the news if they did that? Black Lives Matter has protested every shooting of a black man they could find this summer. And the best they could come up with was Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, two criminals who were reaching for fucking weapons. Come on. And now I've heard from real police officers that they're being even more careful about shooting black people now because they know it could get put all over the news. So the opposite of what MTV is proposing is what's actually true. All right, so currently police officers spend about 58 hours in training when it comes to using a firearm, but only eight hours of training for de-escalation. Franny's misinterpreting and skewing information. Again, anything to fit or fuck the police narrative, but really 58 hours of weapons training and eight hours hours of de-escalation training makes perfect sense because teaching someone to clean, build, load, and shoot a Glock 19 is much harder than teaching them to say, excuse me violent criminal, will you please calm down? Let's put down our weapons and have a little chit chat. You can tell Franny not only knows nothing about guns, weapons, and combat, but she also knows nothing about police, military, and their strategies. Basically she knows nothing about this subject. Her opinions are uninformed and wrong. In terms of the military, when we're deployed, we're going to uh, actively hostile places. Whereas the police force, uh, they are there to protect and serve their community. Ooh. So if you, if you treat the, the police like they're the military, you're assuming that they're going to hostile places to begin with. And that sets up a very different relationship with the community. So you're saying we really shouldn't be comparing the police to the military because they do completely different things. Agreed. So why the fuck are you saying the police need more de-escalation training because the military does? And who the fuck is writing and editing these videos? A 10 year old could see the inconsistencies in this video with his eyes closed. I think it's very important um, that the community knows that police have their backs. Um, but it's also important that the police know that the community has their backs because if the community doesn't trust its police force, um, that's going to make the police officers' jobs that much harder. And they're going to find themselves in increasingly dangerous situations. So I think that it has to be a, a two-way street um, for everyone's benefit. Um, it'll make the community safer and it'll also make the police safer. Now this guy's stealing my point. Yeah, black people should try and trust the police more. Well put, Baldy. I'm kind of surprised they left that part in the video. Okay, Benari. Way to show out. <laughs> Whoa, Franny did not like that at all. Typical regressive, can't stand even a hint of dissent from the narrative. And what does show out mean anyway? That's some strange phrasing right there. You could tell she got really uncomfortable when the guy said anything that was slightly contradicting her and fuck the police narrative. Well, that's about it. Of course, there's no mention of not getting involved in activities that will get you in contact with police, like violence and crimes. That's the real solution to this problem of police violence. Don't commit crimes. And if you do, don't resist arrest. Listen to the cops and act calm and they won't shoot you. Even if you're a fucking murderer, the cops won't shoot you if you stay calm and comply with their orders. It's not that hard, people. We gotta stop trying to blame the people trying to help us. 99% of police shootings are justified. Police are not the problem. Criminals are. Thanks for watching our new episode, guys. Before we go, let's do a little Francesca Ramsey update. Number one, we've destroyed Decoded, now the most hated series on YouTube, besides queer kid stuff, maybe. The nightly show with Larry Wilmore was canceled. 
Many won't be an appearing on that shit anymore. And despite calling him racist and sexist, Trump won the election. Franny has been crying about that on Twitter for weeks. Basically everything Franny touches turns to shit. She's racist, bigoted, and not funny at all. When will people stop giving her airtime? Soon, I hope. Until then, we gotta keep combating her bullshit. We can do it, guys. One video at a time. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day. Well, you asked for it and now you got it. New shirts are out at the No Bullshit Teespring store. We've got the plain No BS shirt, the Bullhead shirt, and my new favorite shirt brought to you by a quote from Zara Larson. Get your look at the static shirt today, just in time for Christmas. Links below or just search No Bullshit on Teespring. Thanks again, you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.